it looks like AMD is doing it. They're finally bringing back their monster, but that's not all. Desktop GPU sales are their lowest in decades. PC games are coming to Mac and the first benchmark of AMD's Ryzen 8000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. It's news time and first up for today, I've got a really good one. As you can see here from Momomo underscore US, he actually shared a number of OPN codes officially from AMD. Now, obviously this doesn't necessarily mean too much to most of you, but some of these codes are brand new. And as you can see right here, it looks like the leaker, who I definitely will say has gotten a ton of leaks right in the past, you can see that he found it. And at least according to this, AMD is at least working on new Threadripper CPUs, but it actually gets even better. If you remember, you know, with AMD's last generation of Threadripper, they only released Pro models with their WX series for Threadripper Pro 5000. And that was obviously a bummer for a lot of people because they liked having Threadripper's tons of cores, but didn't necessarily want to go all the way up to their Pro series. Luckily, it looks like AMD is bringing HEDT back. As you can see right here, there isn't just the Pro 7995, 7975, things like that. They're also bringing back regular Threadripper with the 7990X, 7970X, likely stuff like that, but basically 79X0X. So it's definitely exciting to see AMD not continue on this Pro path. I mean, don't get me wrong, I fully understood it when they did it. The vast majority of people who are gonna be purchasing this are gonna be purchasing it for workstations and they're fine with all of the features that the pro models have but I definitely know some people were disappointed so it is really exciting to see this come back now I will say just to kind of ease your excitement a little bit for those of you who are excited for this while AMD is clearly working on these models there's still no guarantee that they'll actually release them they could just be working on them have all the codes and everything like that for them but they may end up not ultimately releasing them Regardless though, with the fact that this is even here, it is at least very good news and shows that they likely, hopefully, given this is right, will. Now before I move on to the next one, if you haven't joined Meld Alerts, I definitely suggest doing that. All you have to do is put in your email address right here and I'm going to send you updates on things like when PC hardware gets released, only almost always just going to be major releases we're talking gpus cpus things like that i also send really good hardware deals when those are out and while i do include affiliate links i'll actually give you suggestions if i like something or not like in this recent email that i sent while the rtx 4060 ti had been released i actually said but i really wouldn't suggest buying it given eight gigabytes just really isn't enough for this gpu i'm also going to be doing some build suggestions so make sure you sign up at meldalerts.com once again that's meldalerts.com and moving on it looks like both amd and nvidia are seriously hurting in a new report from john petty research you can actually see that things are not going well for gpu makers this right here is shipments of desktop discrete graphics cards they're in the millions and first we have nvidia you can see just last year, they were selling over 10 million units, or at least were shipping over 10 million units. Now, they're shipping just over five. So we're talking discrete desktop GPU sales have been cut in half. And AMD, it looks like it's even worse. You can see back in 2022, they were at over 3 million units, and now they're less than 1 million. Intel, of course, has gone up. Regardless, these sales dips are bringing really good deals all around. For example, the 7900 XT just recently dropped in Germany to below 800 euros at 709, okay, to at 800 euros. This obviously still sounds pretty expensive, but given the card launched at 1,049 euros, that's a 24% dip below MSRP. Then we actually have something from video cards as well, where you can see Galax is gonna be lowering prices of at least some of their 4080s. And really there's more stories like this all over and seemingly coming every day, if not multiple times a day. 
So basically, things are not looking good for discrete GPU makers. When we look down here, you can see that sales of graphics cards for desktops dropped to 6.3 million units in the first quarter, down 12.6% sequentially and 38.2% year over year. As you can see, according to JPR, 6.3 million is the lowest quarterly sales results of discrete graphics cards in decades. So this is historically low sales. And obviously that is going to be pretty decent for consumers. Now I will say one negative, at least whenever it comes to Nvidia graphics cards is that they're having massive demand on the AI side of things. So because of that, they may just say, oh, well, we're not really making all that much on the gaming side. So we'll just take the silicon that we were going to use for gaming GPUs and we'll just use it for AI. So that is obviously one worrisome thing that could end up happening. But at the same time, Nvidia does not want to do that just because diversification is obviously very important for these massive companies. They definitely don't want to put all their eggs in the AI basket. And next up for today, we have a very interesting story regarding Apple. If you saw my last video, you know that I discussed their new VR slash AR headset that they announced at WWDC. Well, they actually announced something else that I would argue is just as interesting, if not a little bit more. It's actually a tool called the Game Porting Toolkit. Terrible names aside, what it is is essentially a translation layer that allows DX11 and DX12 games to actually run on Mac. Of course, there are some downsides to this as video cards notes. DX12 Vulkan translations don't always work without hiccups and there are many bugs or optimizations that require to make the game playable. As I said, it took a long time and a lot of software engineering effort to enable seamless Valve's Proton support on Steam Deck. Still, we know it can be done and it's definitely interesting. As you can see right here, modders have already had some success running games like Cyberpunk 2077, Diablo 4, and others, I might add, on the Apple M1 and M2 Max processors. You can actually see this one right here using the Apple M1 with Cyberpunk 2077. It was getting around between around 12 to 15 FPS. It's obviously pretty terrible, although it is running on Ultra. With that said, it's also not even at 1080p. It's at 1440 by 900, but still, you know, obviously that isn't playable, but potentially they could, you know, lower it to say medium settings, stuff like that. But at least according to this on the M2 Max, it was getting around 40 FPS. Not only that, but when we look at Diablo 4, we can see that this is absolutely getting playable frames right here. 80 FPS. Once again, it's not even at 1080p, but still 80 FPS is pretty impressive to say the least. Hogwarts Legacy was also getting, um, it's saying 80, but hold on one second. Yeah, when the game actually goes, it's also getting around 40 FPS. This is once again with the M2 Max. So it really depends on the game, obviously, as to how well it can play it. But at least for the newer titles, you'll almost definitely need an M2 Max. Still, this is pretty interesting. And obviously, I mean, I'm going to say I don't even own a Mac, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And also, you know, playing on Macs has always sort of been a joke, almost a meme at this point. But it is pretty interesting that Apple is taking this approach and we really could start seeing more and more PC games on Apple products. And lastly for today, I have a very exciting leak that actually comes from Bench Leaks, you can see right here, and later reported by Kit Guru. The leaks are new benchmarks of an AMD CPU that's almost certainly a Ryzen 8000 part. As you can see right here, this one is one of the benchmarks, although both of them were for the exact same engineering sample, but this one's Einstein at home. And the really key point here is where it says Family 26. This is important because, as you can see, they mention it right here, uh, ID of 25, the OPN code, is for Zen 3 and Zen 4, and ID of 24 is Zen 2, Zen Plus, and Zen. So moving up to 26 is obviously a massive step. Now, I will say that there is at least a chance that this could be faked, so don't take it as 100%, but effectively, it means if this is right, that AMD is already in the process of testing out their next-gen CPUs. More specifically, this one, as you can see, it says 
16 processors, it's basically 16 threads. So this is an eight core, 16 thread CPU. So like I said, it's almost certainly Ryzen 8000. Now, while it is a benchmark, unfortunately, it really doesn't tell us too much. Plus, given this is such an early engineering sample, I'd argue there's really no point in even looking at it anyway, but still, this shows us that Ryzen 8000 really isn't all that far off. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Ryzen 8000? Or do you have a Mac and are kind of hoping to play some PC games on it? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.